Welcome to this tutorial on making gears. I am starting out with the gear carrier and even more specifically the axis of rotation. Circles are a really tricky element to pull off with a 3D pen and after practicing I've found that it helps me to focus on the start and the stop button and also trying to move my hand fast enough to keep up with the flow of the pen. Uh, the most essential piece of making a successful circle is working on a surface that won't let this filament slide around. The work surface that I'm trying out today is a piece of plexiglass. In the past, I found that the plexiglass was still a little bit too slick, so I roughed this one up with some sandpaper, but later I found out that it was too sticky and I almost ruined this gear carrier by trying to pry it off. And so I finished the product project by using the shiny side of the plexiglass. I learned that it's really important to do a test patch before starting on your actual project so that you end up not wasting time or ruin the pieces that you've made. It kind of just really depends on the brand of filament that you're using and the temperature that your pen has to be set at. This pen was set at 190 degrees Celsius for today. The purple part of this gear carrier that I've been working on is just to hold the gears in place. The pattern that I'm tracing is just for looks, so I'm really not stressing about being too exact. You could also just fill in the rectangle as a solid piece if you wanted to as well. While you watch me finish up this gear carrier, I'm going to tell you just a little bit more about gears in general. To start with the basics, they're a really simple machine that is technically a wheel with teeth. The main concept of sim simple machines is to change the magnitude or the direction of a force without adding any additional energy into your, into your setup. Gears are really helpful in transferring a force, especially a rotational force, which is called torque. Gears can change the torque, the direction or speed of the work you're trying to do. If you had a line of gears that were all the same size, the output would be the same as the input in every way. If you had gears that change in size, then the overall work would be transferred over to the output, but the torque or the speed would be different. A large gear will give you high torque and slow spe speed, and a small gear will give you low torque and fast speed. If you had a tiny motor spinning really quickly, but it wasn't strong enough for what you needed it to do, you could add a larger gear next to it and it would give a stronger push or it would have more torque. However, the speed would be slower and that's what you have to trade off with gears. The, you know, and that is the trick with gears is you have to trade torque for speed or vice versa. Clock hands are a really good example of using gears to change the speed of rotation. The hour, the minute, and the second hand all travel at different speeds, but they're powered by the same motor. And the gears inside the clock are what are designed in a special way to help each hand rotate at the correct pace. People combine gears together in really clever ways to have them do the work that is needed. Gears can change the direction of the spinning from counterclockwise to clockwise. They can also change the angles of rotation too. Um, for example, the gears of the teeth could fit together so the gears are perpendicular to each other. Depending on how the gear is made, they could really reach any angle that you would need them to. Now that I'm finishing up this gear carrier, you're about to see me struggle to remove this piece from the, the plexiglass. When you are ready to make those axes of rotation, um, you need to make sure you're working on the flat side of the gear carrier um, so that the gears don't get caught on the little pieces that are sticking up. Now that I was finally able to get that pried up with the butter knife successfully without breaking any of the pieces off of it, I was finding out that the light blue that I chose was actually a different type of plastic. The dark blue is PLA, which I've been working with mostly so far, and then I bought some, some ABS plastic to try out and I, I just grabbed that lighter blue which was ABS and I wasn't paying attention. And so that's why it is not sticking 
to itself or to the other color of blue very well. I found that the ABS, it cools so quickly that it, you don't have time to use it and stick things to it before it cools, which is handy in some applications. But for what I'm trying to do with it now, it, it wasn't as handy. But it did stack up on top of itself really nicely. Usually the PLA will um, sag and bend a little bit, but the ABS was able to hold its shape as I went up higher. I think for this project, I still prefer using the PLA because you can kind of use it like glue to stick some of the pieces together that we'll need to do later. On this next circle that I'm going to do, we will be using it later to hold the gears in place. And you will get lots of practice making circles doing this project. So you'll be great at circles by the time that you get done. And I apologize for the big jump in this video. My camera stopped recording and I didn't notice, but I did. I figured that I didn't need to refilm because there's two gears and the process of making them is the same. So I, you can just watch me start on that other gear and you'll still know how to do it just fine. And I would just want to note that it's important to make the gears pretty accurate because the teeth will jam together if you make them a little bit too big. And I did move the plexiglass around to get the best angle for my hand to work at. And I'm building the edge of the teeth thicker to about three layers so that the gears won't slip underneath each other so easily. To start with the other gear, I like to start on the outlines. I'm just making sure that the color was the correct color coming out. And then I'm starting to make that circle in the middle and then moving out to the outer teeth and just being really careful to keep those as accurate as possible. That is a little tricky with 3D pens because you have to keep your hand moving or else it starts to pile up and bubble up. And it just takes a little practice on keeping your hand moving at the pace that it needs to as that filament comes up. And then I just fill in the gear one, one tooth at a time and overlapping those a little bit so that they will, the gear will stay together and not break apart in the end. And it's just exactly the same process that I used for making the red gear. The red gear just had a slightly different pattern in the center, but... It still applies the same thing again here, making the edges thicker so that the teeth can grab each other a little bit easier. And even though I was working on the, the slick side of the plexiglass now, they were still pretty stuck on there. And I'm just putting those onto the axis of rotation. And the second axis of rotation was a little too big to fit inside the gear, so I had to get it off and cut it off and then make a new one, a new axis that was going to fit a little more precisely inside the gear. And there we go, that fits just fine. I also found that this red gear had some pieces of plastic that were sticking up and causing it to, to snag a little bit as well. And then once again, I'm, I'm still, that ABS would not stick to itself, so I had to load up some PLA fabric in or PLA plastic into the pen and then I was able to use that PLA like like glue to get those larger circles to sit on top that will hold the gears down into place and there they go. 